Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Ted Lempert, President of Children Now, a national research and advocacy organization that aims to be a voice for children as our society grapples with issues affecting their lives. Ted serves on the San Mateo County Board of Education and was also the founding CEO of EdVoice, a grassroots education reform organization. He was a California State Assembly member and served on the San Mateo County Board of Supervisors. Ted has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us, and I would like to thank you, Ted, for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you. You are now part of, of Children Now, but you have a much longer history um, of involvement with education issues. Could you just sketch for us your view of the field, of the state of education for children today, particularly in California, and then talk a little bit about your motivations for founding EdVoice, your previous work, uh, your work on the Board of Education now, and of course, the, the work of Children Now coming, going forward. Sure, well, uh, being at Children Now is really the, the culmination of a, a, a multi-decade effort now to, to try to uh, ensure that uh, every child in, in this state has a great education and has a chance to reach their full potential. And, and personally, it's sort of funny, it's almost I'm trying to uh, make sure every kid has what I had growing up. And so uh, after practicing law for a couple years, I got into politics and spent uh, m most of my time in elected office mm -hmm. really working on education issues and trying to make, better thing make things better for kids. And uh, when I was term limited out of the uh, assembly, I've moved now uh, full time and, and full focus uh, into uh, advocacy and, and really trying to, to change the dynamics and, and making sure that every child really does have what they need to, to be successful. So let's talk about children now. Talk a little bit about the, the, the role of the organization, its founding, and its mission going forward. Sure. Um, children Now is uh, 22 years old, and it was uh, uh, founded to try to make children's advocacy more strategic and more effective. And, and one of the things I like to talk to folks about is, why is this so difficult with, with all the problems we have in, in our country, uh, you know, and so much divisiveness? I think the one thing folks can agree on is, our kids, right? You know, let's make life better for our children. And yet, uh, we seem to be going backwards. You know, a lot of the decisions made in California and Washington, D.C. are not pro-child. When you say not pro-child, what does that specifically mean? I like looking at the outcomes. And so, uh, you know, the United States has slipped among uh, other developed n nations in terms of our educational attainment. You know, we're down in the uh, 25, 30 rank in terms of our, our reading and math. And then California, compared to the 50 states, uh, is, is one of the bottom 10 states in terms of our reading and, and math scores. And so it, when I say not pro-child, our, our output on our education side is, is not strong. And in fact, uh, this generation of children uh, is the first generation in, in modern history, uh, not all of <laughs> history, to have a, an expected shorter lifespan than their parents and to have a lower standard of living than their parents. So if, if, if we don't change things and become more uh, pro-kid, uh, th that uh, prognosis is gonna become a, a reality. And it, it's really pretty extraordinary to think that this next generation is gonna be worse off than, than w we've had it. So you've talked about education. What other dimensions are you sure. concerned about? Yeah, one of the things I love about children now is, uh, for lack of a better word, we look at a whole child approach. And so we recognize if, if kids are gonna have an opportunity to reach their full potential, they need to be well educated and uh, also need access to good health care and be healthy. So we look at children uh, birth to 18 uh, and look at uh, both their education and health and you know, specifically early education, K through 12, after school, and then kids who have particular health needs or are those being net, met. And then we also uh, have a program that focuses on the impact of media uh, on children as well, because as we know that has a major impact on young people's lives. You started off talking about uh, issues of poverty. Are you also uh, uh, focused on that? We, we f look at it as how do we make sure that every child has access to a great education and mm -hmm. great health care, especially kids in need? How are we going to ensure that every single one of those kids has the tools and, and the support they need? So why we, we frame it as a, every child, kids are going to need varying degree of uh, support from all of us if, if they're going to have a shot to succeed. Could you talk a little bit about the role of evidence-based factors in driving your programs and, and driving your decisions? You know, that's a great question because um, one of the things that, that children's advocacy has on its side is strong research. And, and we can say, you know, for example, that uh, there's been a lot of studies out there that one of the things that elevated the United States to its prominence in the, in the 
last century was our education system. Right. You know, and that our, it was public education that really catapulted us over. And, and then you know, we get into very specific items. For example, uh, in the debate over early education and, and, and preschool and childcare, we we've cite uh, re uh, research that has just come out in the last few years that show that it's only the family's responsibility. You know, and, and, and there's no formal support. It, it, the, the research shows that's just not true. Fam families that can afford it are sending their kids to high quality preschool. So while well, that seems a pretty obvious notion, that the, the research and the numbers, you can say, see, here's what's going on out there. Now we need to make sure that all kids have access to those opportunities. What you're saying when you say that, that there are bad decisions that are made for children, you're talking in terms of those trends, that those decisions are leading toward less, less healthy children, children who will grow up in a, in a less um, economically advantageous position, and you're talking about educationally, we're, we're, we're trending down as well. Absolutely, and, and a couple of examples of that, on, uh, a lot of this is budget related. How can it be budget related? <laughs> We've been a very prosperous society, haven't we? Great question, it's what I think about every day. You would think that uh, since we have been a prosperous society and that the one thing most folks can agree on is kids, that kids would be right. doing better off, but in fact, Speaking nationally, the percentage of the federal budget going towards children has been declining steadily over the last few decades. And has that been made up by state budgets or not? Well, that's a good question. In, in California, no, right? without speaking about the other states. So in, in California, for example, we, when, when I entered uh, kindergarten, we ranked fourth per capita of the 50 states in terms of public education spending. Now when you factor in cost of living, California is 47th of the 50 states. And with okay. this year's budget, we might drop to to dead last. So, and, and what, what's happened is we have uh, prioritized other things in, in government and the priority of children has slipped. If the priority of children has slipped and the, and the spending, are, spending is down and uh, children are less educated and they're going to be less healthy than their parents, how do you turn that around? Depending on the issue, there's lots of measures we can take. In, in California, there's a number of reforms that we could do to make uh, how the money gets distributed to the school site much more efficient. And so th th that's a reform that is, is, not is not necessarily adding dollars. That having been said, uh, a high quality education costs dollars. I mean, we, we, we know that uh, you know, from what a, a private school costs, from what when people talk about higher education, we see well-funded uh, universities being able to attract the best faculty improving their facilities. So some of this is not rocket science. It does cost money to have a quite high quality program. And I, I think what's most frustrating from our point of view is regardless of what the size of the pie is, so regardless of how large the state budget is, kids should get first call on that. It's the best investment we can make. And yet that it, it's been going in the, the opposite direction and that's what we need to change. So why, do, why should I care about your child? We should all care about a, my kids and all kids, very simply, uh, it, it, it's the future. Uh, if, if we want to have a strong economy, uh, a, a good society, if we want to you know, look beyond ourselves and say, what's this place going to look like when we're gone, that's our kids. That, that, that's our future. But we've cut our spending on schools. We've cut our spending on child health. And is it possible that we have unintentionally commoditized our, our, ch our children? And Absolutely. And you, you ask how we you know, turn this around. And, and what's interesting when you look at children's issues is there really is an opportunity to bring lots of folks together. It's, it's an issue where everyone wins, essentially, if, if kids do better. And, and so really our challenge is, uh, how do we bring all those folks together to push, push for better support for children? Let's talk about Proposition 13. Over the last several years, um, particularly property owners have, have um, had some advantage from, from lower taxes. Yep. Uh, tax rates have been, um, been lower. Now we're in a budget crisis. One can point to various causes of that, certainly spending, certainly revenue not matching spending is, is an issue. Um, how do you feel about Proposition 13 today? It's certainly been harmful, and I think there's some ways to change it without getting but rid of the whole thing. But harmful in what was it? Harmful on? Sure, harmful in the sense that nationally, school spending traditionally comes from property tax. We have a lower property tax in this state than most other states. Our income tax and our sales tax is much higher but our property tax is very low. And since schools are historically, traditionally funded by property tax, the fact that we have a lower property tax is having a huge impact on the fact that we spend less on schools. So 
there's a there's a causal relationship simply because there is a there is a uh, traditional linkage between property taxes and schooling. That's right. On on the on the reduction in school quality yes. uh, here in in California. Yep. Is that a a, a a failure of tax policy or is that a failure of, of will to invest? Because it isn't necessarily the case that education needs to constantly be tied to property taxes. You're absolutely correct. It, it, it's, a, it's a failure of will. I mean, it, to, to put it in larger perspective, California ranks somewhere between 10th and 20th in overall taxation if you add all the taxes together, the 50 states. On a per states. capita basis? Y yes, on a, on a per capita. And the reason I'm giving you that big range is there's many ways of calculating that. So we're somewhere between 10th and 20th. We have the highest demand on government services. Our, our public employees are paid the most. We have the most, the highest percentage of poor people in this state. Huge demand on government. So you can see something's not adding up. We rank low in education. We don't rank low in other uh, government services. And so it, it, could we provide the resources that we need for a high functioning education system without changing Prop 13? Yes, um, it would mean you know, looking at other taxes and or uh, being willing to, you know, cut some other programs, which, you know, the way we look at it as children now is we, we need to prioritize kids. That should be the first call on, on the public sector and, and society. And, and, and let's make sure we're getting kids what they need to succeed. Then let's sort out the other, everything else. We've done essentially the opposite. Without um, becoming a, 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 a lobbyist, which of course Joe now is not a lobbyist, mm -hmm. how do you get heard on a policy level right. in this cacophony of voices? There's a voice for just about every cause. And you're a small organization, you have 24 individuals working there, you have a, you have a small budget of $4 million. How do, how do you even get heard? Two ways. One, through research and through the facts. And so we put out a number of research studies. We have an annual report card in, in California that gives you the stats on how kids are faring and makes recommendations on how we go forward. Is your research accepted by the different political factions, uh, what would be called the right or the left? Uh, are you neutral ground? We sure strive to be. And you know everyone can pick apart different research studies. But one of the things that uh, you know, our organization has historically tries to do and, and tries very much to do now uh, is to be viewed as, as impartial in that sense. And so we reach out to conservatives and business groups as much to progressives and, and civil rights and other groups. And, and so we, we, we actually, in our report card, it's really a snapshot of a lot of research that, out, that is out there. So we cite uh, different pieces of research, a lot of the government data to put forward the best proposal. So that's one. And then the second thing we do is we build coalitions. Um, and so it, it's interesting, a lot of my time is spent uh, with business organizations, uh, with civil rights organizations, with education organizations, uh, because especially the way politics is today, it's very interest group driven, you, you right. know, as you know. So uh, I'll spend as much time reaching out to other interest groups saying, this is why you should be prioritizing kids. This is how you can help with the kids agenda and trying to build these coalitions. And that's been uh, pretty successful, actually. Who are your co core funders? Are they individuals? Are they foundations? Are they uh, other other children's groups? Yeah, it, it's it's uh, individuals and foundations, and so uh, a, a number of the large Californian and national foundations fund us on a variety of our issues, and then uh, we get individual donations um, a, as well. And over the last twenty years, uh, can you describe how you have, uh, have evolved, um, Children Now, and, and how this this organization um, will evolve in the future? Sure. Well, some things have uh, have remained constant, which is a positive, because if something's working, keep doing it. Right. So we, we keep doing our report card, uh, although we, we've uh, gone back to giving letter grades, which I think gets a lot more uh, attention, um, and to doing research and to keeping most of our work in California, although we do have this national program on the impact of media. So those are things that have been relatively constant over the last 22 years. Uh, what's been different, what we've just launched recently, is what we call the children's movement. Um, and, and this is our effort, because children now, I think, for years, has struggled with why isn't children's advocacy more effective? And, and so in addition to this coalition work, what we've realized is there are hundreds if not thousands of groups out there around the state, more around the country, that provide services to kids, that care about kids, care passionately about kids, and it's very decentralized, and there's no coordination. And every group tries to build up their group. So children now, because we work on a wide set of issues and have good relations with so many different groups, what we've realized is let groups speak in their own voice. 
let them speak in their own voice, but unify it around a, a movement. So this is very recent, but a, a specific example is we've launched a Don't Cut Kids in the State Budget campaign. This is something that a wide range of organizations can either sign on through Children Now or can do it in their own name. Uh, but if, if that message is, gets heard um, by the hundreds and if not thousands of groups out there, that's incredibly powerful. How do we make sure that the needs of children are accommodated in those areas where the geographic distance is, is considerable, where poverty is higher, yep. and where uh, issues are just different? Great question. We actually, in addition to our report card, we put out a report called the County Scorecard. So we look at a range of indicators across every county in, in, in California. So two things that come out of that. One is uh, there's great needs for kids in every county in this state, you know, urban, rural, suburban. That even said, you're, you're raising an excellent point, which too often gets ignored in that the intense poverty and a lot of lack of services in, in rural areas. And so some of our reports have really highlighted that. And we'll partner with groups on the ground around the state, but try to step back and take that statewide look and say, hey, uh, you know, this formula is disadvantaging these areas, or we need to pay extra attention to, to these areas. And I do think that oftentimes the, the rural areas do get um, ignored as too strong, but not the attention they need. How do you partner with other organizations? I think of uh, organizations like the uh, Children's Defense Fund mm -hmm. and, and there are a whole range of different organizations that deal in one or more or in, in a matter of fact all of the issues that, that you're dealing with. How, how does that work? We're in about, about 13 or 14 different issue campaigns right now. Every single one of those is in a coalition and a different set of partners for each one. So, uh, you know, we work, uh, for example, in our health insurance campaign, we work with several other major statewide organizations and lots of, of locals. In a couple of our uh, efforts, many of our partners are, are business groups. So it, 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 in part, it depends on, on the issue. Uh, one of the things we find advantageous in California, since we're the largest children's advocacy group in the state, and we're involved in so many of these coalitions, we're able to um, sh share information about, you know, how this issue affects another, and then also connect people, because, you know, we're working on a health coalition, say, wait a second, you need to actually talk to these education folks. So what Children Now does is we, we work in a range of these issues, range of coalitions, and, and try to help connect these issues and try to um, de-silo it and, and also keep folks from, uh, fighting among themselves in the children's field. It, you, you, you know, it goes back to what we were chatting about earlier. Let's prioritize kids overall. And if we have to cut, uh, you know, let's go elsewhere. One of the things that I find interesting is the fact that you have had a political life and you have also had this, this nonprofit life yep. and then arguably a, a public service life that, that perhaps straddles the two. There are some similarities. Uh, what I actually uh, enjoy more about this life, it's a little saner, um, although you worked very hard, is I, I got into politics because I wanted to improve education and improve the community. Um, but you're, you're required to focus on a lot of issues as a politician and to also uh, respond to a lot of competing interests. As an advocate, I'm full time on what I thought was most important as a politician, but now that's all I focus on. And so Children Now was, was founded to really create more um, st strategic children's advocacy, more effective policies. And we feel that we've really ramped that up now in the last number of years and have become a, a very effective uh, advocacy voice for kids. Thank you so much Thank for sharing you. with us your insights.